T-minus 20 seconds and counting. 15. 12. 11. 10. 9. 9. 9. Ignition sequence start. We have liftoff. Welcome to the dawn of a new era. guys half click up here welcome back to the channel boys it appears as though the long-awaited YZF R9 is indeed happening forever the subject of rumors and faux press releases and speculation if you don't follow social media like Instagram it seems specifically then you missed the teaser video that you just saw at the beginning of this vlog Yamaha dropped that a couple of days ago um, on Instagram and it does appear as though the R9 again is going to be release released or um, uh, more specifically announced five days from now on Wednesday October 9th no coincidence that all of the 999 um, subliminal messaging on there if you will plus the date of October 9th no coincidence guys now me myself I I have been long awaiting this machine um, for years now for years since it was first rumored um, everybody really got their hopes up when it was released that uh, Yamaha had placed a trademark on the R9 imagery as well as the name R9 uh, specifically YZF R9 now of course that pretty much solidified it for most people because why would they go that far just not to produce the machine right so unless you've been living under a rock you're already aware of the fact that this machine is going to be based off of the MT-09 However, it's not exactly just going to be a fared MT-09. Uh, it will have the CP3, that is the inline cross-plane triple, um, but it's going to have its own little electronics package as well as um, uh, a sport-tuned suspension similar to the MT-09 SP. In fact, um, un the understanding is that there will be two versions of the R9. You will have the standard R9 and you'll also have the R9 SP which will actually feature winglets similar to uh, or, or inspired by MotoGP bikes which should look just phenomenal. Um, you know Ducati did it with the Panigale etc etc. It looks good. It just does right like you can't argue that. Um, so <laughs> man I'm excited. Um, of course there are arguments both ways you have the naysayers who are like why in the heck would you want a 900 super sport well here's the deal guys take me for example all right let's use me you guys go ahead and critique and 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 criticize all you want in the comments i invite it but take me for example i have no use for a leader bike i have no use for the insurance expense i have no use for the unusable power as you see here we are sitting in traffic on my commute from work and um, I don't need to spend my entire commute in first gear you know what I mean now look aside from that I simply don't have the use for the power of a leader bike either all right now look I'm on a Yamaha FZ6R I have been since 2015 and um, this is an inlight 4 600 cc bike um, I like the Jixxer 750 as far as the looks and the performance goes um, I, I'm kind of a Yamaha guy now, that's not to say that I'm not open to other manufacturers of course um, you know Suzuki of course has a stigma to it and you know the the Jixxer bros this that and the other that's something you'd have to look past and just get beyond right if you're gonna own a Suzuki motorcycle um, you know I don't know 
given the option to have a comparable machine power wise as the GSXR, I know some of you guys just have a conniption fit over the term Jixer. The GSXR 750, uh, power wise, comparatively speaking, um, the the R9, a 900cc bike, for me, would be the way to go. I already have an inline triple. I, I have a Triumph Tiger 800. I love the power delivery. I would imagine that kind of power delivery in a nice little sport bike package would just be an absolute pleasure to ride, man. And you're talking about a, a dedicated super sport too, right? So it's it's almost a no-brainer for me but I get it I understand the arguments against a 900 cc super sport but you have to look at it from Yamaha's perspective as well they have nothing to compete with the Jixxer 750 there's no more middle-class uh, super sport in Yamaha's R series lineup the R6 has gone away um, you have that big gap all the way between the R6 and the R1 unless you want to go with the naked machine not everybody wants a naked machine. I have no desire for a naked style sport bike. I don't like them. Um, I just don't. If I'm going to be on a machine that has any semblance of a super sport in either performance or ergonomics and, and et cetera, et cetera, um, I'm going to go with an actual fair super sport bike. And the R3 is not going to cut it for me. You know what I mean? Nor will the R7. In fact, that's what I meant to say. The R7 is just not going to cut it for me. Um, I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of the CP2 power plant. Granted, I have no experience with it, but I have walked R7s around the racetrack on this bike, okay? And I'm just not going to have it. Not going to have it. And so, yeah, from Yamaha, presently, you can have the Bunk R7 or you can jump straight up to the R1 and there's nothing in between unless of course you get a used R6 and so yeah enter the R9 the middleweight apparently that everyone wants including myself an alternative to the GSXR 750 a long awaited machine something that Yamaha has obviously spent quite some time on and so I'm willing to bet that it's done right and done right the first time similar to the FZ6R they had to do nothing to this machine in particular for all of its production 2009 to 2017 the bike stayed the same I would like to think that it's going to be a similar situation with the R9 and look with it being Yamaha I'm almost certain that even if they do make revisions to the bike, it's only going to be for purely for enhancement purposes. I don't feel that Yamaha is going to have to release any model revisions that have anything to do with mechanical reliability or issues as such. Now, let us discuss exactly what it was that we saw in that teaser video. So you're looking at this thing, right? It's, it's a hype video and they're not just revealing anything right that's that's gonna be safe for October 9th um, but they're giving you hints you see in the background a team Yamaha blue color scheme obviously that's consistent with all of the R series bikes gotta offer team Yamaha blue you see that it's full fairing as well I believe there's some gold forks there and it's all blurry you know you just have to look real close and then it shifts to a very close in frame shot a panning shot of the nose of the machine. What we see there are the little LED running lights. Very consistent with the current and past generation of the R6 as well as the R1 as well as the R7. We also see a single round light. Now it has yet to be revealed whether that round light is a single center mounted light like it is on the R7 or if it's dual um, round headlights like on the R1 for example and I believe on the R6 as well right you have the LED lights stacked on top of round headlights I would imagine that that is what you can expect I could be wrong um, now with regards to me being wrong on that I want you to look at these two pictures right here now this guy I can't remember his name it's 
custom concept, something or another, I don't know. But the significance of this guy and these pictures is that this guy has traditionally been um, pretty spot on for the most part with his renderings uh, with respect to what future vehicles, albeit cars or um, motorcycles, will look like. His track record is pretty good, okay? Um, and he has rendered it with a single center headlight interpretation as you can see in his render. Um, I, I slightly argue that he may be wrong in that, in that part of his rendering. And we will find out on the 9th. Um, I'm really hoping that they model it after the R1 and R6. Um, just leave that single headlight stuff to the R7. Let that be unique, you know, and, uh, and go on and model the R9 after the traditional R series motorcycles, the venerable R6 and the flagship R1. I think it would just fit in aesthetically perfect along with those two motorcycles. All right, so what else do we got? It appears as though, and, and pointed out by that Instagram user, it appears as though we have five spoke wheels. It seems like the width of the rear tire is kind of deceiving as represented in the video. It almost looks like it's just a, a 160 or a, a 170. I'd like to think that an R9 would have a 170 or 180, you know, yet to be, yet to be seen, we'll see. We'll know soon enough. Um, but yeah, five-spoke wheel. Has a, uh, a swing arm that does resemble the MT-09. Which some may argue is a, an oversimplified swing arm. But look, guys. Rest assured that the tuning fork folks have done it right. They spent a lot of time on the design of this machine. Um, the MT-09 already being a proven platform. They did it right. Trust that they did it right. It's going to be awesome. Price point, of course, is up for speculation. The MT-09 is like 10 grand. Perhaps the entry-level R9 will be 10 grand, maybe 11, um, and maybe the SP will run 12,995. Let's hope it's somewhere around there. Insurance-wise, uh, I don't know, man. Um, it's going to be an R series machine. Insurance companies are going to classify it as an R, you know. Um, fun fact, this machine classified with my insurance company is simply listed as an FZ6, not an FZ6R. And it's dirt cheap to insure this bike. Dirt cheap. So I don't know what they're going to do insurance wise. I would hate to find out that you got to pay 200 bucks a month. You know, surely it wouldn't be like that. It's a 900, you know, I don't know. It's probably an 899 to be exact. Um, and maybe we're talking about 125 to 150 a month to insure the thing. Again, lots that is yet to be seen. The point, though, of this vlog is to express my personal excitement, along with the excitement of countless others who have been waiting for this machine, um, to confirm that indeed, it would appear that on Wednesday, October 9th, the YZF R9 is going to be revealed to the world. And I'm confident that it's going to be freaking awesome. Guys, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Would you buy a Yamaha R9? If you're in a situation like I am, you want a middleweight bike, you don't want a leader bike, but you want more power in a super sport, a pure super sport platform, um, more power than the 600cc, for example, that you're on now. Let me know what you think. Don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram, at HalfClickUp. Please click the like button, get us some exposure, and if you want, subscribe. But as always, this has been me, and that's been you. It's Half Click Up, guys. I will catch you on the next one. Peace and goodbye.